Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, we ought to be on fire tonight after that sermon this morning. Amen. 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 And I didn't mean that, but we ought to be on fire after hearing that fire message this morning. It was good. Powerful. Amen. Powerful. Amen. powerful. We're looking for a good service tonight. Amen. Tonight, won't, it's tomorrow, uh, this morning won't suffice for tonight. That, that, that was for this morning. We're looking for a, a greater outpouring tonight. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. You girls doing good? Praise God. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen? Yes. Let us take a prayer request tonight. If you have an outspoken request, let it be known at this time. Sister. I had a phone call today. A very dear friend of mine's wife was driving with this, and she was murdered and shot to death. Maybe you have a special unspoken request tonight that you want to lift up before the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to ask Brother Travis to lead us to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, Lord, thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Heavenly Father, Lord God, once again, we're telling you for the Lord to praise tonight, God.
got so much yes. to thank him for. Yes. Oh, my Lord and my God, I thank you tonight, God, for your goodness and mercy. The tender mercies of love and kindness that he showered upon us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sister Tangy, come. Let's give her undivided attention tonight. Good to see everybody here tonight. Terry, can you turn it down just a little bit? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. tonight. God without limits. A God who can do anything. Does anyone here tonight have a need? Is there anybody here tonight that has a need? If you have a need, let me see your hands tonight. Is anybody here have a need? Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that God can do anything. There is nothing too hard for him. There's nothing that you are going through tonight that he doesn't care, that he doesn't see, and that he will bring you through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or ask. God is wanting to bring new hope into some situations to increase our faith, to believe in the super natural tonight. What's impossible with man, Brother Claw, is possible with God tonight. Amen. Tonight I want to start off with a video that's uh, it, it's about the um, feeding of the 5,000. It comes from the Gospel of John. It's his version tonight. I thought it would be good for us to actually have a visual of what that day may have been like. If you'll join me tonight as we watch this video. I'll do it. Enough for all these people. 
making people sit down. There was a lot of grass there, so all the people sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God. children there. could have been easily 20,000 people that were there that day. What an amazing miracle. And if our God can do that, yes. what is it that any one of us, a need that we have, can our God not work it out for us? Can he not bring us through? Can he not do the impossible? What man says is impossible, God says is possible. Amen. There's nothing too hard for our God. If you could stand for the reading of the word tonight. I'm just going to read four scriptures, or four, four verses out of each gospel tonight. Matthew 14, 20, Mark 6, 42, Luke 9, 17, and John 6, 12. Matthew 14, 20 says, And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they did all eat, and they were filled. And they did eat, and were all filled. And there was taken up of the fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. John 6, 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost, nothing be wasted tonight. The reason why I read from all four Gospels is it says you only need two or three witnesses. We have four right here. It says that at the end of the day, when all was said and done, they were filled. They had been satisfied that God gave them exactly what they needed that day. Amen. Right. Sister, Amen. Luke, can you pray over the reading of the word tonight? Almighty God, thank you, Lord, that you are the bread of life. We thank you for the miracles, God. That you did not only in your day, but you're still doing today. We thank you that we serve a miracle working God. And Lord, if you fed the 5,000 and all of those that were multiplied with you, God, surely you can feed your people today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Touch your high divine and cross the yes. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This day the crowds did not come looking to be fed physically or spiritually, but at the end of the day, they received both food for the body, the soul, and the spirit. For the whole body, the whole body 
was nourished that day. Jesus has all that we need. Amen. There's nothing out there in this world that we can find that will supply all of your needs like Jesus will. Amen. This is what God wants us to see, that my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle besides the resurrection that you will find in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wanted us to know just who it is that we serve tonight. Hallelujah. He, they wanted us to know the God that can give us anything that we need. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Previously, Jesus had sent the disciples out two by two ministering the gospel. He had given them power over unclean spirits. He had given them the power to heal the sick. Hallelujah. And afterwards, the disciples would go to Jesus and give report of all that they had done. They would also give report that John the Baptist had been beheaded. So Jesus, along with his disciples, they would go uh, by ship privately to a place called Bethsaida. The first reason is because I believe Jesus was grieved. But the second reason was because he had seen all that the disciples had been out doing. They had been out ministering. And there were so many peoples that were thronging around them. That they were clamoring for them to, to heal them, to touch them. They wanted what they had. And they didn't even take time to eat. And Jesus saw this. And he knew that they needed time to get away. And so he would call them to come away with him so that they could rest and they could eat. Amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, you can't get so caught up in the ministry that you don't take time Amen. to rest. Amen. If you don't get alone with God yes. and rest, you will get burnt out tonight. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The location of the feeding of the 5,000 is very important. Location becomes an informative lens through which we make sense of events in our lives. We mark life by location because location matters. Bethsaida was a Jewish region. This is important because uh, we also have another feeding in the gospel in Matthew and Mark of the 4,000. Many of us know that there was a 5,000 and then there was a 4,000 plus. Why was this important? Because the 4,000 was in the place of Decapolis, which is a Gentile region. God wants us to know that this gospel was not just for the Jew, it's for the Jew and the Gentiles. It's for everyone yes, out yes, there. Yes, Amen? Yes, That's yes, why I think it was important. This was a foreshadow. The 4,000 was a foreshadow of the Holy Ghost fallen on Cornelius' house that day after the Holy Ghost had been sent, hallelujah, that it would prove that this gospel is for anyone that will come. Amen. 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 It's for all people. Amen. Beth Seder was also a desert place. To hear from God, sometimes he places you in a desolate place, a barren desert, isolated, uninhabited place to teach you. God needs your ab absolute attention on what he's about to do, Brother Warren. Oftentimes, he chooses to separate you from the too many distractions of this world around you so that he can have a platform to form a strong relationship, an unhindered relationship with you and me. And so he has a place in some a place away from all of the noise. You see, Jesus had been out teaching the gospel. He'd been in the villages. He'd been telling the people about the good news. He'd been healing the sick. But the people weren't hearing the teaching because the next thing that we see in the gospel is that the reason why they were following him that day was because of the signs that they had seen. It wasn't about the teaching. And Jesus, in this place, when he would look up and he would see the crowds coming, he would look up and he felt compassion. Amen. Because they were a people that were like a, a people without a shepherd. Amen. 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 
Why are you following Jesus? We're living in the last days, and Mark tells us in uh, Mark 13 and 22 that false Christ and false prophets will rise, and they shall show signs and wonders to deduce if it were possible, even the elect. Be careful that you're not just following the signs. Amen. Amen. Be careful that you're not... If you want to hear the, the truth of God's word, that when you are standing before somebody, wherever you might go, whoever stands in this pulpit, make sure it's not just because they're uh, able to touch somebody and, and they're able to heal somebody, Brother Warren. You've got to hear the truth of this gospel, not just to tickle your ear, not just a feel-good gospel. Make sure that you are hearing the truth. Make sure you're feeling conviction on the inside that you're not able to go out of here the same way that you came in here, that you leave out of here with conviction about the sins and the things that you know are not right and they're not in this gospel. Make sure you're hearing the truth of God's word tonight. Amen. Both Matthew and Mark said that Jesus, when he saw the large clouds, he felt compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion. First Peter 3 and 8 says, Finally, be you all of one mind, having compassion, one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. This means to feel deeply for others. Amen. What moved Jesus should move you and me, Brother Paul? Uh, yeah. Compassion yeah. Yeah. for people. Be intentional this year. That's my word. First one was be intentional. My last sermon about being at the feet of Jesus yeah. tonight. Yeah. I want you to be intentional, Sister Heidi, about having compassion for your brothers yeah. and sisters. Right. Hallelujah. That's true. Because you truly care. Compassion is not concerned with material or physical things. It's concerned with the human spirit and the soul. Right. The spiritual definition of compassion involves acting to alleviate the suffering of others. Why are you doing what you're doing tonight? What is your motive for what you are doing? That's right. That's right. Amen. Is it because you truly desire to help others to alleviate their pain and, and their suffering because you care? Is it because you want a title or a position? Uh, is it because you want to get people to like you, to follow you, to to get up here and sing and display your talents. Why are you ministering tonight? Is, is it so that you can stand up and, and, and in the limelight and everybody make a name for yourself? Do you all realize that's what's happening today in this world? The Amen. preachers are out there. They're making a name for themselves and they forgot about the people. The needs of the people is what's most important. People are hurting. People are dying. People are going to hell. And they're more worried about making a name for themselves. What is your motive for what you're doing tonight? And I said, Jesus went out. He said, I felt compassion. It wasn't because he wanted the crowds to follow him that day. As a matter of fact, Jesus was one that would always go away from the crowds. He was never about making a name for himself. Amen. Remember David. Y'all remember the little boy shepherd? He was out tending to the sheep that day. And, and, and we know that uh, they came looking for the one that was going to be the next king. There was five of them that day. There would be, they thought that, that what was his name? I can't even yeah. yeah. No, the one that would come to an off, Lloyd David. Samuel, I couldn't think of it. Thank you, Sister Luke. Samuel would come, and there would be five of them, and, and his father would gather them up, and he would line them up, and he would say, look at my sons. These are the ones. And David, he's out in the field, and he's tending to the sheep. He's doing what he knows to do, what he should be doing. And he looks at all of them, and he goes to them, and he said, no, not none of these. None of these. Do you have another son? Do you have another one? He said, yeah, but he's out tending to the sheep. He's out tending the sheep. He said, well, bring him. Bring him. And when he came in, he said, you're the one. You're the one. You're the one that has the heart. He sees about the heart. God sees the heart. God knows the heart. It's not about what the works are, what, how good you 
heart, something about how well you've done or how good you are. God sees your heart. Amen. Brother Warren, God sees your heart. Amen. He knows your heart. He knows you've got a heart for the people. Amen. That's why he's chosen you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus would begin to teach the crowds many things about the kingdom of God as well as heal their sick. Hallelujah. Sister Stephanie talked about the kingdom of God, and I didn't share much because that's what was part of my sermon tonight, was talking about the kingdom of God. Of God. With the coming of Jesus, the kingdom of God began not in the coronation of a mighty king, but in the birth of a crying baby. Yes. As Jesus' ministry began in Mark, he announces the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel, Mark 1 and 15. Repentance is not something that we preach about, but yet that was what Jesus came doing, preaching and teaching the kingdom, teaching repentance. Repent, turn from your sins, hallelujah. Call on the name of the Lord, come to me, hallelujah. Just stay like you are. You don't need to turn around. Just come down. And, and, and I, I don't really understand what they're doing these days, Sister Luke. There's not a repentance. Repentance means that you turn. You change. There has to be a change. If you need a God like ours that is so large and so big, how can you not change? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you come into the presence, into the God of this Bible, if you get into his presence, there's going to be a change. That's right. Yes. yes. Philip's understanding of Jesus' power 
and to strengthen his faith. That is what I believe the Lord is trying to do for us tonight. He is trying to bring us to a new level to let us know by, by this story and the many stories throughout the word. If we'll read the scriptures, if we'll look around at all that God is doing, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Hallelujah. He is trying to bring us up to a new level in our faith to strengthen us. To show us that he is the God of the impossible. Yes. If we would right. come to him with, with whatever we have, if yes. we'll just bring it to him tonight, yes. he will take it and use yes. it for his glory. Yes. When have you ever seen one of God's children begging for bread? Amen. I don't know about y'all, but he's always provided for me. He's always come through for yes. me. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples an important lesson about trust and dependence on him, even in seemingly impossible <laughs> situations. The disciples would tell Jesus, well, just send the people away and let them go get themselves something to eat. Why? Because all they could see was with the, they were looking with the natural eye. God wants us to go away from just looking at what we have right here and right now. He wants to move us into the supernatural, to believe for the un, the, the impossible tonight. Yes, yes. Glory to God. They were in a desert place and they had limited resources, but with God, there is no such thing as limited resources. He owns it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. And if he hands that off, he'll give it to you. Yes. If you'll but ask. Crystal, he'll take care of you. You won't go without. You won't go out. When's the last time you looked around and you just looked up and you said, God, thank you for my house. Thank you for the food and my refrigerator. Thank you for the car that I have. You, you have everything that you need. Yes. And even if you didn't have all that, you still have Jesus. Yes. And he is all we need. Amen. Amen. You and I are the one that limits God tonight. Our faith is what limits what God can do tonight. We're the one that puts him in a box. Right. If we truly Amen. believe tonight, if you'll hear what I'm saying tonight, we serve a limitless God. A God without limits. Anything you have need of. His word says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Lord Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, Amen. Jesus looked at him and said, well, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Could you imagine what that was like that day? And they're looking at all of these people, five plus thousand, 20,000 people. He says, you give them something to eat. And they're like, how are we going to do this? And uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, would look over and say, well, we have a lad over here. And he has uh, five loaves of bread, barley bread. And he has two fishes. But what is this to so many people? How can we use this? Isn't that awesome? How many of us have said, God, how can you use me? God, what can you do with me tonight? I don't have anything. Some of you think that you're too old, you're too young, you don't have enough talents, but you've got two hands. You got two feet. You got a mouth. Oh, hallelujah. If you'll just bring your little bit with God. Look, just a little is much. Amen. That's the truth. Glory to God. God often chooses to work through us to accomplish his purposes in this case. Using the disciples to distribute the food demonstrated God's desire to involve people in his divine plan. God uses people, you and me, to serve people. God does not need us, but he willingly chooses to use us to bring glory to his yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want y'all to remember something. Y'all remember Sister Luke and her?
for mayonnaise? Yeah. I wrote this note in here because that's what it reminded me of. All she did was stand up here. She didn't have no mayonnaise. She spoke it from the pulpit. And the next thing, God used people to bring her some mayonnaise. <laughs> if you don't ever think God will supply your needs, even a jar of mayonnaise, our God cares that's about right. all of our needs. Yeah, and right. he just supplies all of our needs. See, whatever you have need of, you just mention it to God. And God says, okay. And he'll find somebody. Hallelujah. There's an endless supply. In John, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother says to Jesus, well, I already went there. Glory to God. God's good, isn't he? Yes, yes. He, he looks over and he says um, in Matthew, he, he, uh, after Andrew had gone about the, the five loaves and the fish, after he had gone over there, uh, in Matthew 14 and 18, it says that Jesus said to him, he said, well, bring them here to me. And he takes them and he lifts them up to heaven and he blesses them. And he breaks the bread and the fish. Jesus would tell the disciples to have the crowds to sit down in groups of fifties and a hundreds on the grass. This reminds me of Psalms 23 that says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures tonight. Glory to God. God takes care of everything. Just the green grass. Think about the, the, the animals that would graze on the hillsides. That speaks of all provision, everything, all your nourishment, the full body, everything that you have need of. That's true. Glory to God. Amen. Why was it important that they would sit down in 50s and 100s? 1 Corinthians 14, 40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Without order, you have confusion. And we serve a God that is not the author of confusion. But he is the author of peace. If you are in a place and you are in, a, in all kinds of confusion, then you know that it's not God. Hallelujah. Because God does everything in order and in decency. Amen. Jesus would then take the bread and the two fishes. He would put them up to heaven and bless them, and he gave them out. He said he kept giving them out. He didn't just give them a few baskets, but every time the disciples would come for the fall, every time you come to the table, God's got more, more than enough, and he kept giving them out, and he kept giving them out. But you see something? The disciples had to be willing to come and get the bread, from Jesus and take it and give it out. Yes, yes. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Yes, yes. You and I have to be willing to go to the master and get the bread. We have to be able to go and sit down to this word and get the bread of life and take it and not hoard it and keep it for ourselves. But there's a people out there that is hurting and dying. And every time that you get something, you need to give it out. My sister, we were talking about this through the, she didn't even have a clue what I was preaching on. But I, we were sharing different ones of us. We're sharing the scriptures. And I said, yes, it's good to share it, to give it out. Because there's more where it came from. There's more that's what we're supposed to say. God gives it to you. You give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus gave out until all the people had eaten, and they were all filled, and they were satisfied. They were filled up. Every one of the disciples were in agreement that day. They had all seen it, that God gave them more than enough that day, that every family, every man, every woman, every child was filled. Their bellies were filled. They were satisfied. They were not lacking. And then they would come back and they would take up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. Jesus said, go and pick up the leftovers. There was enough for the disciples to take on their journeys. Hallelujah. He provided a meal for every 
The second thing I want you to take away from my message tonight is that Jesus uses people to bless others. We all are called to serve. As God pours into you, give out to others. Yes, there is an endless supply of bread to be filled and to be satisfied. Nothing wasted. The third thing is that Jesus is big enough for any expectations. Here he surpassed the expectations. He is the ultimate. This means that Jesus provides every need and he exceeds. He always goes above and beyond our expectations. Do you know that you can outgive God tonight? Kira, you cannot outgive God. I don't care. He owns it all anyway. Just give it back to him and watch him multiply it tonight. You give it back to him and he'll give you even more. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've given somebody something and God will it'll multiply it. Uh, every single time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You cannot outgive our God tonight. John 1 and 3 says that all things came into being through him and apart from him. Nothing came into being that has come into being. Jesus is our creator. He's the creator of all things. Therefore, he shall supply all that you have need of. Number four, I want you to take this away. That we face here, what we face here on this earth, nothing that we face is too big for our God. Matthew 6, 25 and 27 says this, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature tonight? Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33 says, again, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. You can stand to your feet. Jesus wants us to know that first and foremost, this gospel is for everyone. For whosoever will. It's for all people tonight. And second, he wants us to know that there is absolutely nothing too hard for our God. He is the God of miracles. He is the God of the impossible tonight. In the beginning of the service, I asked everyone here that had a need to raise their hand. Can I see those hands one more time? This is what I'm going to ask tonight. I'm going to play a song. It's called We Need a Miracle by Charity Gill. And I want to ask y'all, everyone that had a need to come up and just get into these altars tonight. And let's pray and let's believe. I'm going to ask the ministers, Brother Warren, Sister Lou, Stephanie Travis. I'm going to ask y'all, Brother Club, if you will come. And if every person that will come tonight that had a need, then we're going to just begin to pray and believe that we serve a God of miracles tonight. And there is nothing too hard for our God tonight that he will not do for every one of you tonight. I am not Jesus, and no, I cannot heal you. But I can believe tonight that God will heal you. I know the one who is the healer. His name is Jesus. And I know that he is in this house tonight. I know that I have prayed. I have sought God for the service. And I have asked him to touch each and every one of you tonight and work miracles in your life. If you will come tonight, I'm going to ask you to come now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 